Space Shuttle Challenger blasts off on its 25th mission. At one minute and 15 seconds into its flight, there was an in the heavens. And the sky caught fire as the shuttle exploded in fragments. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. All seven crew members on board are dead. Man's reach for the stars and the price we have to pay. Hello, I'm Richard Zachariah. We've almost become blasé to the wonder of the whole space shuttle operation. This morning, while much of the world slept, seven people died on what should have been a routine flight around the planet. On 11am today, we'll bring you the fullest coverage of this tragedy, something that really has been an explosion heard around the world. Here's Greg Hoy in our Los Angeles studio. Thanks, Richard. It's now more than seven hours since Americans awoke to find that this, the greatest tragedy in the history of their beloved space program, had taken place. It seems that NASA officials are no closer now to determining exactly what the cause was of the incident. Let's take a look at how this great tragedy unfolded. Six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. For commentator Richard Coby and his NASA colleagues, this looked to be a flawless repeat of the 24 previous shuttle missions from Kennedy Space Center. But one minute and 30 seconds after liftoff, not even NASA officials could fathom what went wrong. The NASA commentary continued. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. For the crowd gathered at Kennedy Space Center, there was the elation of witnessing the stunning launch, then the realization that something terrible had gone wrong. <laughs> Silence descended on the Kennedy and Johnson Space Centers as NASA scrambled to both accept and explain what had happened. Thanks to the perfect weather over Florida, the best clue as to the cause of the explosion came from slow motion replays of the tragedy. Even they showed little more than a sudden flame between the shuttle and its external fuel tank. Before, in an instant, Challenger disappeared in a ball of flame. Fragments of the wreckage showered into the Atlantic Ocean for more than 15 minutes, prohibiting rescue ships from entering the area. It took four hours before NASA could offer any comment. I am aware and have seen the media showing footage of the launch today from the NASA Select System. We will not speculate as to the specific cause of the explosion based on that footage. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. Thank NASA announced the formation of a board of inquiry and that all data available on the explosion would be impounded until the board has completed its investigation. The question asked throughout the United States was how would the Challenger tragedy affect the shuttle program? Was it simply too dangerous? But President Reagan, who was to have given his State of the Union address tonight, took to national television here to assure all Americans that shuttle flights would continue. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Amongst the crew members killed, Commander Dick Scobie, Michael Smith, Judy Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and America's first citizen in space, teacher Krista McAuliffe, who was known well to Americans as Mark O'Brien reports. 
Krista McAuliffe, the 37-year-old mother of two, became a national heroine when she was selected from 1,100 teachers to become the first citizen in space. She said one of the most difficult aspects of the program was the separation from her husband Steve and children, nine-year-old Scott and six-year-old Carolyn. Love you. All right, see you later, alligator. Okay, let's get dinner ready. The McCaller family had been the focus of publicity during the four and a half months training course which Krista underwent. He's doing a super job. I mean, he took over single parenting without missing a beat. The kids are doing well. He's doing well. I mean, he's doing so well. When I came home the last time, I walked in the kitchen to do something and he kind of looked and he said, excuse me, he said, we don't do that that way anymore. I said, pardon me. <laughs> They do have the ability um, to have contingencies. Um, there, there are plans in case there's a problem. And, and also the, the thought that, th I think I'm going to be up on Challenger's 10th mission. And um, that just to think that the shuttle is, has gone, I mean, 10 times. I mean, that's an exciting thing. And uh, no, I, I, I think it's a, a very safe program. <laughs> At the launch pad, Krista's parents watched the lift off, but their joy quickly turned to confusion. They stared into the sky, trying to see the Challenger, but realised something had gone wrong. A few moments later, a NASA official made his way to the couple to tell them that their daughter's flight had exploded. Krista McAuliffe was selected by President Reagan for the shuttle flight after her application stated she hoped to demystify NASA and space. The teacher wanted her trip to humanise the technology of the space age. As part of the Teacher in Space program, Krista was to have conducted two classes in flight to be linked by satellite to her old school. The students at the school in Concord, New Hampshire joined in the countdown and cheered the spacecraft on its way. But it soon became clear that something was terribly wrong. The school children were ordered back to the class and began to return in shock disbelief. The joy had turned to an unforgettable grief for the students and the nation. So there you have it. That's about the sum total of what is known here in the United States at the moment, Richard. Uh, of course, there, if there are any further developments during 11 a.m., we'll quickly let you know. But for the moment, it's back to you in the studio in Sydney. Thanks very much, uh, Greg Hoy, in our Los Angeles studio. That was Greg Hoy and Mark O'Brien reporting. As Greg said, uh, we'll cross back there if there's any more developments, particularly from NASA. After this break, Ross Simons with more news headlines. And the thing that strikes me most about this morning's tragedy is the silence from Mission Control. When the shuttle exploded into fragments, there was a long delay from Cape Canaveral. Then the bland words, the vehicle has exploded. I suppose you could call that training. But much later, when the full impact had sunk in, NASA called a news conference to explain, to think out loud, to think again about the reasons why. And I address you here this afternoon. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, the space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. I regret that I have to report that based on very preliminary searches of the ocean where the Challenger impacted this morning, these searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. The dedicated crew members of Challenger are Commander Francis Dick Scobie, Pilot Michael J. Smith, Mission Specialist Dr. Judy Resnick, Ellison Onizuka, and Dr. Ronald McNair, and payload specialist on board were Krista McAuliffe and Greg Jarvis. All early indications in the Launch Control Center, the Kennedy Space Center, have indicated that the launch was normal up to approximately 11.40 a.m. this morning, about a minute or so.